Hey guys, it's Sharon from Digital Nomad Quest, and today we're gonna to talk about how to research an out-of-state real estate market. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, welcome. I'm all about teaching y'all how to build passive income, become financially free, and design your best life. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of my latest videos. So when it comes to out-of-state real estate investing, it is very crucial to pick your market. And in order to pick your market, you're going to need to look at a few different factors, which I'm gonna talk about today. A lot of people have been asking me this question, so I'm excited to cover this topic. So in this episode, I'm gonna talk about these crucial factors, but I'm also gonna show you essentially how to research these factors with different resources. So let's just get right into it. First of all, you need to consider supply and demand. It's basic economics that ideally you want supply to be low and demand to be high. So when I talk about supply, I'm talking about the amount of rental properties available and when I'm talking about demand I'm talking about the amount of renters that are gonna be renting out these properties so some questions you might want to ask are how many rental properties are available in the market what's the vacancy rate as well as how long it takes to fill in these properties with renters so normally you can get information like this by talking to people in the market for example property managers I've been able to speak with property managers about vacancy rates and how long it'll take for them to market the property and get some tenants in and that really really reveals a lot of information. Because if it only takes like two weeks or so to get renters in, you know that there are a lot of renters that are looking for properties. You can also look on sites like Craigslist and Zillow to understand how many properties are on the market that are available for rent and how long they have been on the market. Because if they've been on market for a long time, that could possibly mean that demand is low. Number two, you wanna look at population growth. So obviously you're looking for a place with people and it's a good sign if the population is growing. If you look at it from a supply and demand perspective, it just means that there's probably more demand because there's probably going to be more renters people are going to be your customers you don't have to invest in a city that's crazy popular but you probably rather invest in a place that people know that the population is growing rather than a place that you know is out in the middle of nowhere that nobody knows nobody's heard of and not many people are there you want to make sure that there is no trouble finding renters it also means that appreciation potential is higher because there's probably more demand from a buying perspective so even though i like to focus on cash flow appreciation is really important and can actually be most of your profits so for example my property in Antioch has doubled in value and that has actually overpowered the amount of cash flow that I've gotten from it which is actually a lot like I've profited multiple five figures from cash flow but appreciation has actually been six figures but if I sold this property because of appreciation I would be profiting six figures even though I could do that I'm just gonna hold it because I like cash flow so with population growth you are essentially looking for demand from a renter's perspective but also from a a buyer's perspective if you are looking for appreciation potential. Number three is job growth. So job growth is crucial because obviously if there are more jobs to fill, there's gonna be more people coming in to fill those jobs, which will drive residency. Number four, increase in housing prices. So it's good to look at historical data on housing prices and how much they've increased because if there is a lot of appreciation on those home values, it could indicate good factors like job growth and population growth, etc. Number five, you wanna make sure that crime rates aren't too high. So I'll show you how to check this in a minute, but you'll wanna make sure that there's not too much crime in your target market. So first of all, high crime rates are going to affect your housing prices negatively. And secondly, even if it looks like there's cash flow potential, you'll make a lot of money. If you're buying properties in high crime rate neighborhoods, there's chance that it's gonna be a lot of work. There's gonna be a lot of repairs. There might be property damage, you know, different crimes, and it could be even worse. There could be more violent crimes. Like I've heard of things where people get killed in these properties and there can be a lot of trouble, right? So you don't wanna invest in places that could be kind of unsafe. So I'm going to show you how to do this research right now. So city-data.com is actually a really great place to look up a lot of these stats. So for example, if you're going to look up some place like Orlando, Florida, let's go into here, you will be able to understand population growth and everything like that. So you can see population in 2017 versus 2000, and you can see there's a plus 50%, which is really good. And you can also look at median household incomes and stuff like that. You can also look at median home values. So as you can see in 2017, you can see the median house value at $232,600 and it was $97,400 in 2000. So a lot of this data is going to really help you understand in comparison with other markets how it's performing. So you might want to use this tool to look into different neighborhoods and see what you think. You know, judging from the stats with Orlando, these numbers are actually pretty decent. The increase in median home value, the increase in population, 
information is really good as well. And there's even more data below. We can go also into the crime rates. So I typically like to look for a crime index that's under 500. And it actually meets that criteria afterwards. Uh, in 2017, it's lower than 500 now. So stuff like this is really helpful. So go ahead and look, check out citydata.com. You can also look at departmentofnumbers.com slash employment slash metros to see the different areas and the job growth by metropolitan area. So with Orlando, 6% is actually really good too. So you might want to consider this market and, you know, keep researching and looking at different markets and looking at these different levers to see if it's a good idea for you. All right, so I hope that screen share was helpful for you. It actually is very crucial when you are looking up different target markets. There's many different sites that will help you in this journey. So make sure to go do that research around the different factors I talk about. So let's keep going with those different factors. Number six, you wanna look out for natural disasters. I really try not to invest in areas that are prone to natural disasters. Obviously everywhere in the United States, they are prone to natural disasters, but maybe some are more common than others. It really just puts you in a lot of risk. Like you could get your home completely wiped out by disasters. So for example, if there are areas that are prone to hurricanes, tornadoes, things like that, you might not wanna invest there because it really could put you at risk. So make sure to do that research on Google. Number seven, you wanna look at other population drivers and future developments. So when I say population drivers, I mean things like board stadiums, tourist attractions, universities. Universities can be a big one because those students are usually looking to rent. Airports and things like that. It's good to look out for these things that will make people come to that city. It's also a good sign if, you know, that city has some sort of persona or something that makes people want to visit it. And another thing I think about is in terms of exit strategies. So with buy and hold properties, yeah, you want to keep it for a long time. But if anything goes south, you want to make sure you can sell it or, you know, Airbnb it out. So this is one thing that I've thought of of a lot that like you know in the future I'd want to invest in more areas that are maybe more touristy because they could be good for Airbnb and actually Airbnb could cash flow you even more possibly than um, just getting a long-term lease but anyway this video isn't really about that but it's really good to look for different exit strategies to make sure you're safe and I discuss Airbnb because if you're talking about population drivers you know Airbnb is usually good for places that are more touristy and stuff like that so if the city you are researching has that potential. It has more ways that you can actually make money from it. So I also say future development because for example, if Google were creating an office in your target market in the future, that's gonna open up more jobs, it's gonna have more demand, so it's gonna make housing prices go up as well as rental prices go up. So make sure to look out for population drivers and future developments for where you are investing. Number eight is cash flow ability. So the last factor I really wanna mention is you obviously wanna make sure that your property has potential to make money from it when it comes to renting it out to tenants. So I feel like this process of analyzing properties and making sure they can cash flow can happen simultaneously as you are looking for these different factors in your target market because this is part of the research when it comes to figuring out if that target market is good for you to invest in. And I really talk about this more in a previous video where I talk about how to analyze buying and hold properties and I even have a spreadsheet linked in that video. With the spreadsheet you're going to be able to input numbers for example your purchase price, how much you're going to get a loan for, all the different expenses including repairs, vacancy, property management fees, taxes, insurance, all of that. It's all covered in this spreadsheet and it's really useful so make sure to go check it out. I'll also link it below. This part of the process is very crucial as well as this video you want to make sure you're studying both of these in order to understand the steps when it comes to investing in your first out-of-state real estate property. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. These are some of the main factors that I look at and you might probably think of more as you're researching, but I feel like if you research a lot of these things that I talk about, you're gonna be in pretty good shape when you invest in your first property. If you like this video, make sure to smash the like button as well as comment below and let me know which tip actually helped you the most. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified of my latest videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.